All right, you guys, in this one, I'm gonna tell you about the PD60 portable battery charger by ISDT and URUAV. Now, when this battery charger came out and I saw it online, I actually bought two of them. And the reason is it really appealed to me because it has this USB-C input. It has a really high uh, power capacity. It'll charge up to six amps. Now, I'm not sure I'll actually ever use that, but it's nice that it's there. And the other real selling point for me was it's made by ISDT and the ISDT products that I've bought before have been really good quality, easy to use, much better than some of the other portable battery chargers I've used in the past. So uh, when I saw this at the price point, I think it was around 15 bucks, um, it was a no brainer. I picked up two of these to throw in my bag and to use for charging on the way to the field and at the field. And also just as a, a convenient option to have, I've got a house full of USB-C devices between the computers and the tablets and the phones and everything. So uh, for me, it's, it's kind of like the Swiss army knife of chargers. It's not my main charger, but it should be super useful to throw in the bag or you know to keep in the workshop or whatever. Since this charger has a USB-C input, technically you can use just about any USB-C power supply, although I would stay away from phone chargers. Maybe if your phone supports quick charge, but a lot of the older uh, phone chargers probably won't have the amperage at least to take full advantage of uh, the charging speeds that this has. This is my uh, power brick for my uh, MacBook Pro, and it does up to 80 watts, and so this is pretty much overkill for this uh, tiny little portable charger. The interface is super easy to use. That's my complaint on a lot of these portable chargers is they have a confusing menu or button system and I just, I can't be bothered to figure them out. A long press will change your battery chemistry. So we're gonna leave that on LiPo. And then a short press will change your uh, charging rate. So I'm gonna just leave that at one amp at, uh, at least to get started. I'm gonna plug in this uh, Race Day Quad 1300 4S. Okay, so I'm charging a LiPo at one amp. You press the start button, it'll start charging. And that's pretty much all there is to it. It will give you, it has a, an indicator to show you how much is done. It'll give you a warning if uh, there's abnormal voltage. So if, if you have an error, if you do something, uh, I don't know, plug it in backwards or something, there's a lot of protections built into this. And I've had really good luck with ISDT chargers. They, they just feel a little bit higher quality than, than some of the others that I've used. Um, let me demonstrate here by going up to two amps. No problems there. Naturally, since this, this power brick is, is huge, I should be able to go all the way up to six amps. Although I would never charge this battery, really above two amps. I like to charge my batteries at 1C. I'm pretty strict about that. I really take care of my LiPos because LiPos cost a lot of money. <laughs> but I'm just gonna demonstrate that it will work. Yeah, it does work at six amps. Although, what is that about? 4C, 4.5C? I would never charge this LiPo at six amps, but it will work. Okay, now I'm using an anchor power brick. This is a, um, this will do 18 watts power delivery. So pretty much any power brick that will do quick charge or power delivery will work for you. I mean, if you wanna take full advantage of those six amps, you need something pretty substantial, but most people have these lying around the house anyway. So let me test this at, at two amps. I have to wait for a few seconds to make sure it's actually charging it seems to work fine on two amps. Now, I would usually charge these batteries if I have time, I just charge them at one amp. Um, I like to charge my batteries at one C, but it's nice to know it can do that. And just for the, for the heck of it, let's see if it'll do three amps. Let it charge for a few seconds. Nope, it turned off. Okay, so it turns off when it's not receiving enough power from the power supply. And that's, that's a nice safety feature so nothing gets damaged. This battery, I would never charge on three amps anyway, but that's, that, that's nice to know. That this power brick, um, they sell these on, on Amazon, they're pretty affordable, great to have around the house. And this power delivery port does 18 watts and it was happy charging this battery at one amp or two amp 
but not at 3 amps. That's a nice reference to know because maybe you want to ch uh, plug in a, a parallel charging board and charge up you know, two or four of these at the same time. You can do it just a little bit slowly with this power brick. Again, with a MacBook charger or something more substantial, you can go at six amps all day, and no problems at all. Okay, now I've got some battery banks in front of me, and this is where this charger uh, gets really cool. <laughs> because using this in the field or on the road or something with a battery bank is just a really cool, it opens up all kinds of possibilities. So uh, this is just a run-of-the-mill, cheapo, 10,000 milliamp uh, battery bank off Amazon. Nothing special about it. This is a 26,800 milliamp battery bank. This one's a little bit more expensive because it has a, a uh, power delivery port and I believe it'll do up to 30 watts power delivery. So uh, this is obviously much heavier, much more substantial, a little bit more expensive. All right, let's test the, the small bank first. I'm charging this at one amp. No, it didn't like that. It turned off. Let's try one more time to make sure that wasn't just a fluke. And you do have to let it charge for a good five or ten seconds. I've noticed that when there's an error, it'll take it isn't immediate. It'll be after a after a little bit of time. Seems to be charging okay now, although it did restart once. So I would say that this is not necessarily that reliable. It seems to work. It's working now, but it doesn't give me a lot of confidence. And also charging up a thirteen hundred milliamp forest battery with a tiny little battery bank is just it's not a very efficient solution, but just for testing purposes. All right, now we're gonna test this larger battery bank. At one amp, it seems to charge just fine, which you'd expect from such a, uh, such a larger power source. Two amps seems to be okay also. Let's go a little higher. That three amps, and again, I would never charge um, uh, this battery at such a, a high rate. I like to charge my batteries only at one C. I really take care of them. Um, but it's nice to know it can do this because if you were to attach a, a parallel charging board, now that's a that's a time when I might use the maximum power output. Is I might charge four up at once. At six amps, it seems to work okay. I probably wouldn't charge such a large lipos off battery banks just because it's a really inefficient uh, solution. But what I would do is charge up uh, a pile full of uh, two or three S 450 or 500 milliamp batteries for my, my toothpick quads. That's a little bit more of an uh, efficient use of a, a battery bank if you're you know out camping or something. So that's that's six amps on this uh, on this battery bank, and that that seems to work fine. I hope this gives you guys an idea of what the PD60 might be useful for, whether a battery bank, a, a USB-C uh, power supply you've got at home, or even in the car. I know for me it's going to be a great addition when I go out into the countryside to go fly, when I'm camping, or just when I go out to a flying spot that's kind of far away. So it should be really useful for me. All right, you guys, thanks a lot for watching. If you have any questions, comments, if I missed anything, let me know. You know, I'll try to do better next time. All right, thanks a lot for watching. See you guys later.